Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is David Hughes, and I'm the founder at Plant Village at the Pennsylvania State University. Uh, I'm also a associate professor of entomology and biology at Penn State. And it's really a great pleasure to be working alongside the government of Ethiopia and ATA and other colleagues to tackle this very serious problem of the desert locust. I have been working very closely with UNFAO and um, through an organization here called Plant Village, we have built the eLocust 3M app for FAO, and that has been used extensively in Ethiopia and across the Horn of Africa. I wanted to take some time today to show you the platform that we have built uh, in order to help people in Ethiopia track the desert locust and understand what's happening. So what you see now is an ArcGIS platform. So this is a, something that we have access to at Penn State. So you can see that it is hosted by us and it uses um, a spatial database. And it's very useful for looking at geographical coordinates. So there's multiple windows here. So let me just look at this one first. You can click on here and you can look at it as a full screen. And what this is showing you is the data which is coming in to, to the platform from eLocust 3M, the dedicated app for tracking. And it takes a little bit of time to load because there's so much data here. You can go up here and you can, um, you can look at the layers. And so we might turn off the records from 2020. And so what you see are the records from 1985 to 2019. And I think this is really useful for you to understand where the historical records have been for Ethiopia. So, so obviously we can see here uh, a large concentration um, between uh, Tigray and Afar, um, and also here but around Niradawa, and, and then less so uh, historically around the Ogaden Desert. So this is a useful way, and you can click on a data point here and you can say this record is from the 27th of October 2007. And you can also look at a record here and say that's 2019. And in this way, you can look at the historical data. Now we can look at the data which has come in from the eLocust 3M app. And this is in these colors, pink, yellow, and green. So if we click on one of them, and you can see that there's a legend here. So green is for hoppers, pink is for immature swarm, and yellow is for mature swarm. And you can see that this is the data was collected. It was collected in a far in the middle district. And this is the latitude and longitude and the altitude, so height above sea level, and how accurate was the, the app in terms of getting a satellite recording, what type of observation, and whether treatment happened. So that, that's useful for you and you can look at those different records. So now we can close this window and we can look at this other window here. And, and what this is doing is it's taking the observations of swarms and it is looking at them in terms of where they may move depending on the wind. So this uses a model, a wind model that looks at the movement of the swarm at 1,000 or 1,500 meters above sea level. And this is based upon the approach that uh, UNFAO take. And so this can help you understand where they may move. But please remember, this is just a model. Um, FAO have not collected data to, um, to check the accuracy of this model. So it could be that a swarm which is predicted to move here on day one, day two, day three, maybe doesn't. Maybe it stays around Diradawa because even though it is a mature swarm, as, uh, it, it is adults, um, it may be that they're not ready for full flight, so they may move around. Also, please understand that even though the wind is moving this way, it may be that the, the locusts get stopped here so this is important consideration. So this is just for your information. It doesn't mean it's exactly what's going to happen. Now, if I zoom in to one of these points and I click on the point here, 
I can get more information. Um, I can get the the average soil moisture for 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 the previous seven days, um, and that's coming from NASA, which have a satellite which is able to measure the moisture in the soil. And this is really really important when it's a mature swarm because that tells us areas where they're able to breed. So in this case, the, the moisture is very high. Um, if the moisture is between 0 0.15 and 0 0.25, then it's suitable for egg laying. And, and 0.35 is a little bit wet, but it's still suitable. And, and there's a lot of sand here. We also use the, the uh, ISRIC Africa sa soil database to look at the sand. So this, is, these are, these are, this will be a good place for locusts to breed if it was a mature swarm. In this window, um, what we've done is, is looked at the hopper. So at the moment, uh, and I'm recording this on the 8th of October, at the moment, a lot of the observations are hopper bands. And once we know the stage of the hopper, uh, whether it is third instar or fourth instar, then we're able to calculate when they will likely become adults. So in this case, this was observed on the 27th of September and it's a hopper band and it was observed using eLocus 3M and the earliest fledging date is the 29th of September the average could be the 2nd of October and the la latest is the the 6th of October so in this case these hoppers are going to turn into adults at a predictable time and we think this is very useful for the government of Ethiopia to coordinate control and you want to control these when they're still hoppers before they fly because that's much much easier so that's another window that we think and all of these windows can be expanded if you click on here and this one down here was some work that we did with uh, collaborators who do a lot of satellite observations so you can look at some of the data on the satellites um, it's not so accurate and at the moment people are not finding good accuracy in the satellite observations and how well it's able to determine if the if the locusts are doing tremendous amount of damage. You can also look at the number of positive locusts reports. So when when you change this window or or this window, in fact, th this window down here will change. So you can start to see that, for example, Pakistan is a country with a lot of records. Um, and when you zoom in, you'll be able to see how many records. We have in Ethiopia, this will show up here on this uh, window. Um, we can also look at the, the positive records over time. So if we just zoom into Ethiopia, then th this 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 table down here will change. So we can see that this is pro this is Ethiopia here. We can see how many records have happened. And obviously what we want to do is increase that over time. If you look at this window, it, it links to some information on, on, um, on locusts from Plant Village or, or FAO as well as some details about the type of data that we're using. So that's the ArcGIS platform. Uh, please, if you have any suggestions about ways you want us to improve it, we are updating it every day. Most of the records are coming from eLocus 3M, um, but we're also now updating it with the efforts of um, WhatsApp for Business and also the reports that we're getting in from ATA. So this is the, is the is the is the the database and and how that works. Um, great. So I also wanted to show you on the back end platform. So this is on Plan Village. Now you need to have a, a registration. So if you've used eLocus 3M and you've registered with eLocus 3M, please, if you want to have access to this platform, send me the the uh, telephone number you registered with and the name, and then I can make you a user, an Ethiopian locus admin. And this is useful because you can start to see what records are coming in. And th th these are coming in just in the last seven days. And so you can click on a point here and we can see here, this is from Mohammed Said, and we can see where he was. And um, we can see the pictures that he has um, sent in. And we can see some details uh, of the records. Uh, we can see that this is here, the square is a swarm, an immature swarm. We can see the different icons um, 
here for example hopper bands black yellow and you can start to see you can you can zoom in and you can see okay here are the hopper bands that that he took a picture of and we're also um, making this automatic so this is a, a really useful way for you to see where all the positive records are and if you click up here you can also check for the records which are which were just uh, negative so obviously we want people to go out and use the app and sometimes they won't find locus but that's also very important if you click in um so if we zoom in to a uh, person let's let's say you're interested in um looking for a particular person like addy then you can sort sort all the records coming from that particular person so this is a good way for you and in time we'll improve this and, and help you to send a message directly to that person uh, and that way you can have better communication so these are the two tools that Plant Village ha have developed, uh, the ArcGIS platform and eLocus 3M with the associated uh, platform on the back end for countries. Uh, this is something that we're really excited to, to develop further with the collaboration from the government of Ethiopia and our colleagues at ATA and the Ministry of Agriculture. So if you have suggestions, please let us know. Uh, please write to me. Uh, D hughes at psu.edu and, and um, uh, my colleague Elias Nur will also share this information with you. Uh, as I said, it's a great pleasure and a great honor to be able to work with the government of Ethiopia on this. Thank you very much indeed for your time.